In my tutorial today, I am showcasing a gift set of cards that I made for a teacher friend to display on her desk. I use the mixed media technique, combining art mediums, textures, and dimension on this set. So let's get started on the process I used. For my mixed media project, I used a variety of distress paints, distress inks, dye ink, and ink spray on watercolor paper. I then dabbed the distressed paints onto my craft mat in a random pattern. I then spritzed the mat with water. You can use as much or as little as you want depending on the intensity of color you'd like to end up with. Well, what I actually thought was water was my stamp cleaner solution. That explains why it looks so bubbly on this photo, but it actually worked for me on this background. I then laid my watercolor paper on top of my distressed paints. This is what the paper looks like after it dries. I use my heat gun to speed this part up. If you aren't totally satisfied with the color, you can use more distressed inks with an ink applicator to add more color. And again, you'd spritz with water and set it aside to dry. To add background interest, I used the Spellbinders and Pressabilities metal template in the circle pattern. I placed it on my paper and sponge with distress and dye inks. I also took another stencil with a square pattern and dabbed with my distressed paints and ink spray. This is the background I ended up with. I was pleased with how this one turned out. I repeated this process several more times in order to have a variety of backgrounds to work with. What's so great about this technique is that you never end up with the same look twice. Now for the shape cutting. For this, I used the Spellbinders Labels One Die. It's the second largest. I moved it around to get to the part of the background that I wanted and then cut it out on my die cutting machine. Save what's left over after the cut to use to die cut your embellishments or for a future project. As you can see, I die cut a heart, a bird, a butterfly, and a leaf to use on my project. I then gathered up the sentiment stamps as well as the embellishments and dies I was going to use on this project. For my background layering, I am using the Spellbinders Die Decorative Labels 1. Here's the tip. When you cut these intricate dies, place a piece of wax paper between the die and your paper. It makes releasing from the die a breeze. I matched the background to different colors of cardstock. I stamped and decorated my cards, and my idea was to carry the theme of the sentiment over to the embellishments. The first one, I focused on the word season and used an element from the four seasons with a flower, a leaf, a snowflake, and a nest. I thought you might like to see how I made the nest. I used the smallest spellbinder circle die, some burlap, Mod Podge, and a kitchen utensil, in this case a melon baller, to get the rounded shape. I cut the burlap circle and then covered it with Mod Podge. I placed it inside the plastic melon baller and used a heat gun to speed up drying. You could also leave it, put it aside and leave it sit overnight to dry on its own. Now when you remove it from the melon baller, it retains the rounded shape. For the eggs, I used white dry beans that I had in my pantry, and I sponged with Broken China Distress Ink and then set them aside to let them dry. When they dried, they had a speckled look just like robin eggs. I used more Mod Podge to secure them in the nest, and then on the nest itself, I used a glue dot to attach it to my card. On my second card, I focused on the love theme and added hearts over white mesh ribbon. I cut the hearts from my created background and then just ran them through a paper crimper. I completed this card by adding a fabric flower with a pearl center. On this third card, my focus was the word earth. So I used a die cut butterfly again from my leftover backgrounds. The flowers are pre-made dimensional embellishments from Jolie's. On my fourth card, I centered on the word sparrow. I die cut a bird, and this once again was from my created backgrounds, and I used an embossing folder to emboss the bird cage. 
On my fifth and final card, I reversed my thought process and matched the sentiment to the background. I thought my spellbinders' impressibility circles took on the look of crescent moons because of the way I sponged, giving it a terrestrial look. So I kept it simple by just adding rhinestones for a starry look. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you have fun creating your own projects using the mixed media technique.